it, it's insane. So I think if you keep feeding the body with adequate amounts of protein and you do that for a longer period of time, I do think that it increases protein to such, to such an extent that the recovery of, of little wounds is just yeah. twice as fast as regular people. So yeah, it's it's interesting how the, all these little things start to make sense, you know, as you guys discover stuff and I discover stuff and you see all this interconnection. That's why this podcast is so great because you, you find all these metabolic uh, pathways that finally get discovered. When um, no one looks into it. No one cares. No. Nobody's don't care. Well, they, you need to read a lot of studies and understand biochemistry, you know, and I like you guys understand so much about this this chemical composition, which I don't understand. Um, so you, you put our, those three months together. Yeah. You discover something new every podcast. I mean, these last 12 podcasts have been eye opening to me and I, I, you know, spend like 60 hours a week doing reading fucking studies. So it's, uh, yeah, it's great. Well, it's great too. Cause we all complement each other with that stuff, right? Like right. one throws an idea on the other one, complete it. Like I used Dean a lot for, for that stuff, like with the creatine stuff, that's more his world, not mine. Like I'm right. learn. I don't remember half that stuff, but like you look at that stuff all the time. Yeah. Right? Like, mine kind yeah. of stops at the androgens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even to go back to what you're talking about, proteins being incorporated into muscle tissue, um, like hair, your nails, you know, keratin synthesis, mm -hmm. that can be a, an insight into how well you're, you're creating or utilizing amino acids towards protein synthesis for your body's own requirements. So, like, if you're trying to build muscle, but you have genetically evolved to grow hair and grow nails, your body's going to use the amino acids to build these natural proteins that it creates day to day and putting those amino acids into your muscle. So I think, you know, broadly speaking, you can almost assess how well protein metabolism is in your body by looking at your hair and skin or nail health, mm. how well your na nails and hair growing. Yeah. Besides the androgenic alopecia that occurs, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but you can, you can usually tell like the guys that have like better skin and they always complain about, you know, having to trim their hair, that they do seem a little bit more anabolic than average. But is, well, that, is that food or, you know? Well, I mean, if you're on GH for long periods of time, I've been on growth yeah. now for three years, my nails are incredibly thick. Yeah. And all my flat bones grew as well. My wife is <laughs> saying things about my hands. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I, like we talked, like my hair grows really quick, but my hair grows everywhere. Like, um, if I don't shave on my hair, you gorilla, gorilla. Uh, that's, yeah, so that's probably from trend too. It goes everywhere. No. Except but I think like, so the food, like I, I've been on a diet since I was like maybe 15, 16 years old. Cause I was very interested in nutrition before I ever touched steroids. I was like making my own meals. Right. And then I had that motorcycle accident when I was 22, 23 years old. And I was eating a boatload of protein and, and just not missing meals, even here in Thailand when I had that motorcycle accident. And so I had road rash, obviously, in my arms. They put that gauze on there. And then my skin was recovering through the gauze in a day. So that when they took it off to replace it, obviously, for, for um, you know, infection purposes, my skin was already in there. Um, and that was without steroids. So I do think you can upregulate this protein synthesis just by frequent eating protein meals. Because at one point I had to use some sort of special gauze with a little bit of fat on there to, to remove it every day because my skin was really growing in that so fast. By the time I was home, a week later, it was already closed. It, it's insane. So I think if you keep feeding the body with adequate amounts of protein and you do that for a longer period of time, I do think that it increases protein to such, to such an extent that the recovery of, of little wounds is just yeah. twice as fast as regular people. Um, and, that's and that's why I have... I have no scars either. Like there, there's no scars. With normal people that would be wrecked for life. Yeah, that's what you're saying about mTOR. It's not that it doesn't ramp up protein synthesis. It's just whole mm. body. It's not specifically right in yeah. the muscle. Yeah, I lost a lot of size when I uh, obviously had the motorcycle accident. Oh, like in, in two weeks because all the protein protein was being utilized to recover from that uh, accident. Well, if you're natural, you were natural at the time. Mm -hmm. If you're natural at the time, as soon as mechanical tension isn't there, it starts in 48 hours. Yeah, exactly. You, you left chest two down. days later, the chest is atrophying, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, you know, that's, that's normal. If you're bedridden for two weeks, you're going to lose oh, three months, months dude. much three faster months. than it was previously thought. It occurs almost immediately. Oh, even last and time when I had this surgery, 
Yeah, so when I had the surgery on the, the gyno and the laser guy surgery and the leg surgery, that you just shrink by the day. You're like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm on all the gear. <laughs> so you you only use gear. Tension. Yeah, there's no mechanical tension. I didn't train for like four weeks, six well, look weeks. At space, even you know, how fast do they lose astronauts lose muscle incredibly quickly? Yeah. Yeah, that's the last uh, last thing I would want to do if you're a bodybuilder. <laughs> Weightlessness. Yeah. Maybe go to Jupiter and get some extra gravity and Get more size that way. <laughs> Imagine how big your calves would be on Jupiter. <laughs> only one calf. Yeah. It's still me, I'll, 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 yeah. Even with oh, space, man. that's a that's a good like uh, discussion there. I'm horrible with names, but the female astronaut that was stuck up in yeah. the space station, yeah. the change in her facial structure in the ten or eleven months she was stuck in space, um, which would be like classical sort of calcium loss from the jaw like what you'd see with someone verilizing where the jaw becomes more square and more yeah. protruded that when you're up in space for lack of mechanical tension on your body floating is there it don't know this is a woman is there a change in their their sort of hormone profile to produce more testosterone to try and keep some level of muscle mass in space which is where we can seen find a picture of that. Her, yeah, I was seeing that as a before and after, where they're showing her uh, her jaw structure completely changed in the ten does minutes. Their, oh yeah, what was the name? Do, oh. Does their cholesterol get ramped up, astronauts? I don't know. I've never looked at what effect. Because I would space. think that would be a good sign to see what the body's trying to do, right? If it starts ramping up cholesterol, most likely it's trying to make hormones. This was uh, just something I see where it was a before and after comparison, talking about them coming back from space and then it was like the, the physical changes obviously of what was observed with being there the, the jawline completely changed which would be classic of uh yeah there it is there very yeah. prominent jaw the one on the right there uh this one right yeah yeah cra crazy i mean oh, so, yeah look at this look at this oh. chin she wasn't pretty to begin with, but this is, uh, this is some dramatic changes. Uh, let's see if we can find some more. Wow. Before and after. Oh, they all pour into her chin. Poor lady. You know, there's one there for just a no normal before going into space as an this astronaut. One, yeah. um, or even there where her American flag behind her, you can see the, that one to the right. Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah. Literally, you see... Uh, a more feminine structure to speak. And then you're always like what you might see with a virilized woman with the, the bone right. mineral loss and then deposition. To collect all these pictures later on. <laughs> and deposition into the, uh, into the Yeah, jaw. this is a big difference. Yeah, look at this. Here before 2018. And this is uh, later on. Yeah, it's... That's insane. That's a different kind of look maxing. You know, a lot of young boys would be after this uh, more pronounced chin. <laughs> uh, they're cleansing your jaws all night, all day, all night to uh, get that. And then they start doing this. Uh, look at this. Yeah. Okay. They just yeah. need to uh, phone the trip into space and stay there for 10 months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crazy, no? Crazy. Yeah, I, I would not want to go into space if there's no gym and no artificial gravity. So if, if there's a spinning space station with 1.1 Gs, I'm down. But <laughs> zero gravity, no way, dude. No way. There's osteoporosis waiting to happen. That's crazy. All right, what, what else do we have topics on? Uh, 